The digital world changed your whole life? It really has. I mean, when I started out in comedy in the 90s, in the right. mid-90s, there were basically just a few ways to get popular. You had to be on something like The Tonight Show, and if you were on The Tonight Show, you could tour endlessly from it. Now being on The Tonight Show is essentially meaningless. No one cares if you're... There's so many uh, talk shows out there. Who cares if you're on one? Or you had to get a sitcom... Uh, and you had to like sort of get a really strong 10 minute act that could translate into a sitcom like Roseanne or Seinfeld or Ray Romano. And nowadays, uh, with the democratization of the internet, you can basically, I put out a podcast that right. gets 2 million listens a month, and I'm on a sold out tour across the country, and no one has ever heard of me. So, so but hold on, let's just go back to the 2 million a month. Mm -hmm. What did it take for you to get there? I've been doing it for seven years, so when I started seven years ago, I would get about 2,000 listens a week. Uh, I've done it consistently, and I put it out once or twice a week, so I think I've developed an audience over the seven years that is really loyal. Do you make money? Was there a point, a tipping point where you make money on that, or is this really like a, a loss leader to get you it, all the other bookings? It really started out as a loss leader. I think I did it for three or four years, maybe, and I, I started a podcast network myself right. with a bunch of friends, and I um, gave them all shows. Uh, and no advertiser would touch it because no one had ever heard of a podcast before. We were laughed out of um, major, major brands saying, like, why would we ever advertise on a podcast? Uh, and now we can all make really good livings off of it because advertisers have really noticed that people really listen to podcasts and they have really devoted niche listenership. And people are really aiming for niche audiences right now in a way that we've never seen before in comedy. How big do you have to be before you can make money? How many? If you get about thirty thousand listens a week, yeah. then we can kind of we can get an advertiser interested in it. Right. Wow. Yeah. Can we go back to the comment about the Today Show just for a second? Mm -hmm. So getting on a big show. Tonight Show. Tonight, tonight Show. show. Yeah. Did I say the Today Show? Tonight, <laughs> the Tonight Show. Getting on a big show like that doesn't move the needle anymore? It doesn't move the needle anymore. If you, um, it used to be if you did a stand-up set, and especially if Johnny called you over to the couch, right. um, you would tour forever. You would have a really solid headlining uh, career going in the clubs. And now, because there's just so much uh, entertainment out there, it really right. doesn't matter if you're on one of those is shows that, is or not. Is that a reflection of The Tonight Show or of the club scene? It, is it? It's, it's more of a... Ref I mean, the club scene has sort of died down a little bit, but it's more of a uh, kind of... There's so much entertainment out there now, which is, which is great for comedians because now you can get a show but not everyone is watching that show right. anymore. It used to be, you know, if you had a sitcom out there, you know, there'd be 30 million people watching your show. Now we can put out um, my show, you know, my talk show that I host, Comedy Bang Bang. Um, you know, I mean, maybe 100,000 right. people will watch it every week, but, you know, th those people are super devoted to it. What's going to happen to Comedy Central? How, impo how important is Comedy Central in your life these days? I, uh, I think it's great. I mean, it's a great play. Uh, Kent Alterman just took right. over there, and, uh, you know, I mean... Uh, there will always be these sort of gatekeepers and these these kind of destinations that people go to. I know people who just turn on Comedy Central and they leave it on all day. But what's more interesting, I think, are the newer things that are popping up that have niche audiences like CISO, where right. we do bajillion dollar properties. It's a small network, but the people who watch it are rabid, rabid fans, and they're willing to spend money. Uh, I asked you before we, we came on, but uh, most underrated comedian right now that we don't Think about. We talk about Amy Schumer. She's on the cover of Vanity Fair. Everyone month, talks about Amy Schumer. Right. How would she even be underrated? She's got no, a. No, she no, had I'm a saying, number I'm one saying, movie out there. Her. Yeah, exactly. Give us yeah. The names of, of everyone knows Amy Schumer. Everyone knows Key and Peele. You know these people who have really big shows. But I think there's people out there like Paul F. Tompkins, um, who is one of the greatest stand-up comedians of all down. time. Uh, Lauren Lapkus is Lauren another Lapkus, incredible okay. person. She's one of the funniest people I've ever seen. These are people who. They don't mean a lot to the public at large yet. But they will. But not, not only will they, but they have an incredibly devoted audience right now. Um, like myself, who uh, we're on a tour right now, and I'm playing to thousands of people a night, and no one really knows who I am, uh, you know, outside of those people. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.